Hello, my name is Jorb. I love gear. I bought this OP1 on Reverb. Uh, yes, that is the single picture from the listing. This is what it looked like when it got to me. Uh, I bought it with the intention of fixing it up and showing you the process of that. This is that video, the process of fixing it. There is the bonus. I want to try one. I want to have my own opinion of it. I chose to do this now because I'm about to be on a flight for a very, very long time and I want to have something to entertain myself. That flight is to Germany for Super Booth. So subscribe if you want to see that. There's your informal announcement. But this video has a few different groups I imagine finding it. There's a very general group that's here because it's an OP1 that I'm talking about. And the OP1 is very popular. And I get to show you that no matter how inaccessible something seems, there is a way to get it cheaper, buy it broken, and fix it. And the OP1 is a good example for a few reasons. For one, everybody thinks it's too expensive. There's a lot to be said about how expensive it is. And much to its credit, in a lot of ways, the OP1 is sort of modular. If you have a problem with a certain part, chances are you can get just that part as a replacement. And there's all sorts of listings on iFixit. That's a great way for people who aren't super technical or maybe don't have experience fixing other things or soldering or whatever to know that, hey, if something goes wrong with this or if I buy one that doesn't work quite right, you have this sort of last resort button, buy a new battery, buy a new IO board, buy a new DSP board, whatever. And the other group of viewers, which might be two groups again, <laughs> but people who normally watch my repair content, and God bless you for coming back, uh, or people who have a specific issue with their OP1 and they want to watch somebody else step through it and solve that problem. And this video will be great for that. Everything you're going to see, I will remove and replace keys. I will replace the battery. I will solder the connector from the old battery to the new battery. I'll spend some time troubleshooting the IO board. I will briefly clean the unit in general and we'll spend a little, pot, little bit of, and I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the IO board along with sort of stream of consciousness troubleshooting stuff that I honestly think is very, very valuable to see. There are chapters below for you to skip around. If you just want to watch me replace the battery, for example, that's in there. If you just want to see me clean everything that's in there. Um, I'll try and streamline the repair bits as much as possible. So if I'm doing the same thing twice, the second time will be sped up. And I want this video to still be a reasonable length. I would rather put up a 30 minute video that's more accessible than the like uncut, whatever, three hours <laughs> of let me turn the camera on while I work on this. I know people would appreciate that. I know some people would appreciate that. I would rather this be digestible to as many people as possible and useful to as many people as possible. And condensing it, I think, is the right way to do that. So that's what's in the video, the whole process of me getting and fixing this thing. If you have something specific you're here to learn, by all means, click on that. But if you're interested in the whole journey, sit back and enjoy. <laughs> Subscribe if you're so inclined. That helps me a lot. Like the video. If you like the video, that helps me grow. If you want to support me more than that, I have a Patreon, which I'm grateful for all the patrons. You guys, we have some great chats in the Discord. Uh, I have Reverb affiliate links. I can get a kickback no matter what you buy. But it's below this so you can see and easily check what is the current price of a used OP1. Are there any broken ones for sale right now? And also I sell merch. <laughs> Here's some of the designs. I quite like them. Okay, good work, viewer. You've made it through the exposition. You've made it through all the framing. Now, let's start stepping through the specifics of my whole experience with this little guy. Here is the original listing. They were asking $700 at first, and it was described as OP1 in fair condition. Unit has obviously seen some sessions. Works and sounds completely fine. Unit will need a replacement of four knobs, a few keys, and a new battery. Comes with proprietary cable. One, I don't know that the cable is actually proprietary. I think it's just a normal mini USB. But that's all they gave in a single photo, uh, which is not very reassuring. But the rest of the description didn't sound so bad. I made an offer for 500 with a message, and I said, can you tell me some more of what it's been through? Is the battery just not holding charge? With how expensive the keys, knobs, and batteries seem to be, this is where I'm at. Referencing $500. Hope we can make a deal. And they say the unit itself is just a bit dirty from session use, which is hilarious. What session? <laughs> what session are you talking about? Uh, it will need a general exterior cleaning when you buy. Aside from that, the battery is just dead, which are $80 new few new knobs, around $40, a few replacement keys, $30 to $40, uh, $600 will be cutting me a deal. So I'm still a little apprehensive, uh, but an offer for $580 gets accepted, and that's where we begin. I don't have any footage of pulling it out of the packaging, but here is a clip of one of the first things I noticed when I got the unit. It was very clear to me that somebody had been in here already. Two of the three screws that connect this I.O. board, which is where you have your USB your line in, your line out, and your power. All of those are on the same circuit board. And it looked like somebody had re-soldered or attempted to re-solder that port, that USB port. And it was really, really poorly done. One of the ground pads was entirely missing. I could see that all the actual data and power lines to the jack were looking really, really rough. So 
first thing I did, I sent a message to the seller with pictures of what I had seen explaining that it's pretty clear that somebody had been in here and tried to work on this before. And the response was, and I quote, I can tell you for a fact, the previous owner did not open the unit up, has no interest in that sort of thing. Anything under the hood is 100% how it came from Teenage Engineering. That is a lie. (laughs) It's possible they don't know, sure, but that's not true at all. I can 100% for certain tell you this is not factory. (laughs) They wouldn't leave two screws out, even if the soldering was that bad from the factory, which it will not be. There's no way. (laughs) No way are two screws going to be missing. Anyway, we won't worry about that for now. Uh, I had already bought a new battery, and by installing it, I can check and find out if there's a problem with the I.O. board. So that's what you're going to watch now, me opening the unit and replacing the battery. So I need to look up which buttons need to come out to open up the OP-1. Difficulty moderate. We'll see about that. Disconnect the I.O. board. That I can do. I got these. I got a few different dentist tools at a um, flea market a while back. And they have been very, very handy. I can see just barely a screw beneath there. Keys off. And I was already missing some, as you saw. Oh gosh, did I just break that? Should I be opening from one direction or another? But now I know. Pull from the bottom. Is that true for these as well? I think these open this way, right? That feels wrong. (laughs) Did they open this way? That feels right. The four longer keys from the fingerboard should be handled from the left side. The eight smaller keys to be levered from the bottom up. So I may have broken that one. (laughs) That's okay. I needed to order some new ones anyway. Oh, left side. Is this one black for a reason? Or is that just what whoever put it in there was, oh my gosh, (laughs) add available. That appears to be the same length as the silver one. Alrighty, there's that. 12 screws, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10. Did I miss two? All right, then, what's this? Now it's possible to slightly lift the keyboard and set it back. Yep. It sure is. Okay, those are both not in. Pretty cool, though. Hell of a unit. If you can read this, your warranty's gone. Sorry. We already disconnected this ribbon cable. Sorry if you didn't see that. <clears throat> Very impressive. Is that in focus? Of course not. About now? I believe this is the old version of the board, knowing very little about it. Pretty impressive bit of industrial design, if you ask me. Okay. Pull the connector out, disconnect the battery with a spudger. The connector needs to be lifted up and not pulled to the side. Do I have anything small enough to get underneath that? I do. Another little dentist tool. I need to get underneath and lift up. That was surprisingly easy. Pry the battery out, which is glued with double-sided adhesive tape. I'm not going to use the pointy one. Shouldn't use anything pointy with a battery. This is probably an unsafe amount of point. I'm going to change to the (laughs) flat side. Try and pick a more receptive angle. There we go. Just 
just to see how this is labeled. I'm not sure where I'm going to put this, but I'll sneak it somewhere into this talk about the battery. If you just search for OP1 battery, you'll probably find the iFixit link, which is the official you know, parts provider, I guess, for Teenage Engineering, uh, and they're asking $80. You know it will fit. You know it will work with the OP1. You know all the specs are correct, and it has the connector already. But $80 is a lot for a really simple lithium polymer battery. If you, know, if you know the dimensions, if you know the voltage, you know the capacity, you can search for those and find one that'll fit. So it's 05570 or 505070, depending on how that seller or manufacturer is using the first, the millimeter height. Um, but you need 5 millimeters by 50 millimeters by 70 millimeters. The capacity is 1,800 milliamp hours, and the voltage is 3.7 volts. So I just searched for those things on eBay. I found a North American seller, and the one I found was only $15, which is a lot better. <laughs> And the only difference is you need to relocate the wires from the corner to the center, which I did and added a bit of electrical tape, and it doesn't have that connector on it. So the next thing you'll watch, I snip the connector off the old battery and solder that to the wires on the new one. I'm going to snip these wires off and put the connector on there. Um, and instead of faffing with tiny little connectors, you know, I'm going to cut it off about halfway and then solder two little wires together, which should be much easier for me. But when I cut these... I'm going to cut one at a time. You don't want to cut them both together. You'll short the battery. And that could be a problem. Hold one contact down. I touch the other one. Immediately you can see there's a voltage, which is good. These should be 3.7. I'm going to double check that real quick. Yes, 3.7 volts. So it needs only to be about that long. I'm going to take the connector. So, so small. So it shouldn't be too short. Actually, I might have done myself a little dirty. No, I didn't. I'm okay. So I need my wire strippers. There we go. On all sides, then pull off. Can you see that? Criminy. Just, just hardly any exposed. Okay, so I got everything prepared. These two, these two. It is very important to use heat shrink for a battery. So I've cut some pretty small bits already. If they're not quite tight after I solder them, I'll just stick some electrical tape on there as well. So I'm going to pre tin tin both ends. And I have a solder tip that's kind of wide and flat. And normally the rule is you want a tip that's as small as your smallest connection. But for this, I want it to be kind of wide and flat. So I can just push a lot of hot surface area right onto where it needs to go. So I get a little solder on, and then I run it through the wool, and that gets it both covered in solder and cleaned well. And then I'm just going to lightly bring it in and melt some solder onto that point. I can see in the light from my soldering iron that it's coated. Same thing here. I'm going to bend that up just a little bit, actually, so I don't burn my table. <laughs> this will do a few things in part, and I'll just stiffen this outcropping of wires, the exposed bit of the wires here. That can be good, it can be bad, depending on what you're trying to do. For what I'm trying to do now, just join two sets of wires. I think it's a net positive. Sorry to pull it out of your line of sight there, but I need to check it for my view. That isn't great. I don't have excellent coverage, but as I heat these things up, I think that will be okay. Again, being very, very careful because this is a battery not to connect these two things. I'm impatient and I work fast and I can't find my flux. <laughs> so you should use flux. It'll make a lot of these things easier. But I just can't seem to find it right now. Bending these up. Same. Can you see that? Same thing. They're going to get pre-tinned. These seem to be tinned. And I'm going to one at a time bend the other ones out of the way. Like I said again, you cannot be too careful with over with connecting batteries. See, I'm now I'm immediately not confident in this method of connecting them. I'm going to get something beneath them so I don't burn my table. Got to clean this tip. Really dirty. I don't know if I melted plastic on it or what. That black one totally out of the way. Try and Heat the one that's not connected to the battery up and bring them together. It's looking okay.
That seems to be a connection. I'm going to look very, very closely. That looks terrible. <laughs> I'm going to try and realign here. There we go. I like that a lot better. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Heat shrink goes over it. Since this is a battery, we're doing that before. The other half is even on. Call that good. I've got my bit of heat shrink for this half. And we're going to do it all again. Poke and spin. Check my work. I'll be honest, not great. Yeah, I think that might be good enough for rock and roll. If it's not, I'll figure something else out, right? Heat shrink. Applied. Heat applied. Heat shrunk shrunken. Are these liable to slide? Doesn't quite feel like it. I'm going to unplug my soldering iron. Slide it out of the danger zone. I'm going to take some of this stuff just to wrap it in. I don't know if it matters. I don't want this to move, if at all possible. I might need to relocate where the connection is here. I can drag that to the middle. And I'll tape the front of it. Go pull it to the middle. I think I have yellow tape. I do, it's even within reach. That's a freaking miracle. Just a bit of electrical tape to try and keep it in that position or relative to it. Professional? No. Will it work? Hell, maybe. <laughs> Okay, there we are there. I gave myself a lot of extra length, which may be a problem. Let's try and position it cleverly. Oh my gosh, it lit up. That is promising. Okay, I'm gonna try and root these so that they aren't in anything's way. Very professionally, I'm going to stick that piece of such and such there. I will stick this ribbon cable back through. Reconnect the ribbon cable. Hello. Okay, cursed OP1 has a nice cursed battery. <laughs> uh, should I be able to turn this on without the keyboard? Well, son of a bitch. I sure can. Wow, okay, that's good. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to turn it off and put the keyboard back in. I really want to do this in my lap, but I also know that you guys are going to want to see this. Whoa, 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 Jorb, slow down. You know what you have? I fix it. Where'd they go? Ah, I don't think this wanted me to unplug the keyboard. Did it not? No, it just wanted me to lean it backwards. Okay, might be my fault. Let me go back, and I bet they have a keyboard replacement that'll teach me how to plug these suckers in keyboard calibration so I can just pull it to the back it's saying oh wow these just fold pretty well okay this isn't so bad then can you see what I'm doing very nearly but I'm trying to push each of these into these slots and I need to push these flex cable connectors back in oh, see that one was already closed so you push out towards the top of the unit to unlock them and then pull back in to lock them in. That one's good. I'm gonna double check this one was unlocked. Okay, that seems all right. I don't wanna to wiggle too much. Then I'll lean this forward. There she is. A little bit of push up from my new battery. I think once the screws are in, that'll be okay. I might not notice. Actually, I'm just going to turn it on now and see if I can get any noise out of it. For I am too excited. Uh, synth modes? Nope. Here? Nope. Shift one? Nope. So I don't know if I should hear anything out of the speaker right now. Hello? Oh! But I do, alas. And I want another preset, that's these, right? Well, I'll be danged. 
Ah, music. Things are rattling because this isn't locked down. But that's all good. So I'm going to turn it off. Um, reinstall the screws. Is there any reason not to do the screws? No, because this new battery seems to have solved our problem, which is good. What do you guys think? Is that battery going to last? <laughs> I don't think so. You guys think whatever's on here is good? I think that just got recorded super hot. Uh, stop. Synths. Synths. One, two, three, four. Those are pages for one. If I hold shift in this. Oh! And I've got one more thing to check right now. I want to see if this turns on some charging light when I plug this in, because I don't think it will. Battery level. When you hold down the help key, where the hell is that? Here. I think that's the lowest charge. Okay. I think that means it's low. Not that it's charging. Ugh. Okay. So where we're at now, I replaced the battery and I can get it to turn on, but it is still not charging with the charger. And I think that's because the I.O. board is bad. So I'm going to request, request excuse me, a refund for the connector board. That was not included uh, in the description that that would be a problem. Uh, they were probably also, to be honest, wrong about the battery being a problem because it just wasn't charging because the connector board was messed up. <sighs> so I may have ruined a good battery and wasted money in buying a new one, but at least I know that battery's connecting well enough to... Transfer charge. I just need to get a new I.O. board. Okay. That's where I was at. I was looking for a new I.O. board. Uh, iFixit sells them for $80. They were out of stock. I found someone in a Facebook group that sold me one that they had picked up as a spare and included a set of the original knobs. So, Alex, thank you again for your help. It's been great to chat with you. Uh, yes, I could have spent some more time trying to resolder the USB jack myself, but since that wasn't included in the listing, plus it not working was almost certainly the result of somebody who didn't know what they're doing, I had no idea how bad the damage would be, and if the I.O. board doesn't work, you're not getting audio in and out, and you're not charging. That's something that is mission critical. I need that to work for this unit to work. So I opted to ask for a partial refund and just get a known good new board because I don't want to have any problems with it, especially if I'm going to take this to Super Booth. <laughs> I want to be able to make content there uh, without worrying about it breaking. Anyway, the cleaning you've been watching behind is sped up by like 10 times. I'm just using Q-tips and isopropyl. You'll see me wedge, you know, my prying tool underneath the keys to hold them up while I put apply a little bit of pressure. I didn't get great before cleaning picks, but these stills do a decent job of showing some of the like worst spots uh, that have now improved, but it just feels better. <laughs> it doesn't feel dirty. There's not a layer of things on it, uh, especially in the back. You can see a pretty good layer of contrast. Okay, next big topic and something I have a lot to complain about that I'm really going to have to pare down. In the photos of the original listing, you can see that there's three that are just gone. No explanation as to why they're gone, <laughs> but I ordered replacements uh, before the unit even got here because I could see which ones I needed, right? I got them from a reverb seller who was a great help and put a few into one listing for me, but at like $20 a pop, that's a ton of money. I was really thinking I just needed to fix those three, but I also needed a few scissor clips, which I didn't realize at first. Those were, I think, $10 each. And then after the battery fix, I found, and then after the battery fix, I learned that two more of the white keyboard keys, they wouldn't stay down, they wouldn't press in correctly. So I needed to go get two more of those and an additional scissor clip. <sighs> so altogether, I ended up spending $110 on new keycaps, and I only needed five plus some scissor clips. That drives me absolutely insane. Had I known that $110 would be going to the keycaps, normally I think, oh, little plastic pieces, not the big of a deal, right? Had I known I would have fought for a cheaper price up front or I would have waited for an OP1 that was having problems that didn't include bad or missing keycaps. Um, because there's no amount of technical skill, you know what I mean, that I can use to overcome the price of that. The battery, I can do that. The IO board, it's, it's possible to see that. But for the keycaps, you just need them. If you don't have them, 
you just need them. You know, you can't outsmart it. <laughs> that is the frustrating part of this. And I'm telling you this and I'm telling you like this, because if you're looking for a repairable OP1 that has visibly missing keycaps, factor that into the price. And also on any of them, ask specifically. If there's any keys that look okay in the photos that are actually having problems staying or pressing, you should know that in advance and you should factor that into the price. Uh, in an effort to save money on another broken keycap, I did transplant the post from one of my broken white keys. I just super glued it onto the microphone keycap, this guy, the sampling keycap, because it had a few issues. You know, I don't think necessarily that if the posts are bad, you can always like clip one off a spare and super glue it on. But it's staying solid for now, so at least in my case, it seems to have helped a little bit. Uh, in pretty much the same sentiment for knobs. The original knobs are $30. That is way too much. Really, really does frustrate me. Uh, I think the OP1 has a very particular look, and if it was missing those, I assumed it would be a problem. I'm kind of changing my mind about that. Um, I'm glad that I got them from the same seller that I got the I.O. board. They were very kind to sell me those together for just the price of the I.O. board, so I am happy to have them, and I think it'll help if and when I eventually sell this. Um, but just to, again, like prove a point... I just put these guitar pedal knobs because I had three of the colors already. I just had to order green. Red and white are bigger. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and the color coding I do think is important for actually using the unit, especially for somebody like me who's learning it. Look, reflection of second job. <laughs> but as far as, you know, do you need the original knobs? Hell no. So if there's one that's broken and you don't care about not having the original knobs, which you shouldn't, 75 cents each, three dollars literally 10 times less than the original knobs for, for something aftermarket you guys you guys get it you know what i'm saying uh anyway the last bit of the repair is is super uneventful the new io board got here i installed it which the footage of is missing i can't find it i don't know if i didn't record it or or missed it but here is just a clip of the new io board in there as far as replacing those two screws that were missing I went to a hobby shop with the one I had. We figured out the thread. I think it was a two millimeter thread. The only things they had were longer socket heads. So I bought some extra thick washers and I stacked those. You have enough clearance in that little chamber for the IO port that doesn't make a difference. So I just stacked a few washers so that they didn't bottom out and really close back up. That's our OP1 fixed. So overall thoughts, if I were to do this again, I would not get one with so many missing keycaps. Otherwise, I think this turned out to be an okay win. Um, I, if I get the partial refund back, which I haven't yet, I don't know if I'm allowed to like talk about it before it's settled, <laughs> like a legal battle. But uh, if I get the partial refund back, and I, I kind of expect to, my total for an okay condition, OP1 with a totally fresh battery and a totally fresh IO board, which does make a difference, uh, my total will be about $700. Certainly not the margin I anticipated, but not a bad price. And something that looked pretty bleak when it showed up to be, you know, working quite well now, I'm really, really proud of. I'm still very bad at holding things in front of my face, even if they're little and very Instagrammable. Anyway, there you go. I hope that was helpful. I hope I gave you some confidence to try these things on your own, or I hope I showed you that there is always a cheaper way to get some piece of gear. No matter how inaccessible it seems, somebody has treated one poorly <laughs> and you can get a good deal by undoing that. So there you go. My name is Jorb. I love gear. So far, I'd like to say I am very impressed with some of the things the OP1 does and other things that I'm not. I will eventually do a video, my full opinions on this. I hope to learn it and use it uh, on my trip to Superbooth, at least on the flight to and from Germany that I'm going to use to try and learn this. But there you go. My name is Jorb. I love gear. Thanks for watching. Cheers and so long.